Today's video is a special one. Not in the sense that this is another top 10 video, but in the sense that it features one of my most prominent heroes. This is the one hero that inspired me to be more creative, one that I proudly walk around with on my otherwise pure black and white wardrobe. So proud, so that I even went all the way to bear the mark on my own skin till the day that I pass on. This week's top 10 list is on Batman. Seriously? Spoiling the content again? Let's just get on with this. First of all, thank you to all of those who voted all those weeks ago on what next top 10 list you want to see. And you voted very, very evenly, but Batman it is. So Batman you'll get. So in this video, much like my top 10 DC Omnibus video, I'm gonna start off by showing you the books that I've already shown in previous video because with all of these top 10 lists, some books seem to overlap as some of my top 10 graphic novels are also some of my top 10 Batman books and some of my top 10 DC Omnibus and so on. So I don't know, maybe some of these books I'll show you for a third time. I don't really know. But stick with me, we're gonna see my top 10 Batman runs. So I'm gonna start off with a book that I've previously shown you in another top 10 video, and that is The Dark Knight Returns. This is the box set that contains Frank Miller's work on The Dark Knight, with each and every single issue bound into its own separate hardcover. So, if you don't know, this series is a four issue miniseries that basically revamped The Dark Knight. And of course Frank Miller has had other runs, much like the Batman Year One and then later on the very controversial All-Star Batman Robin. So we have some up and downs with that guy. But when it comes to the Dark Knight Returns, this is some of his best work ever. And ever since watching the animated movie adaptation of this, I actually got into this even more as I got a better hang on the dialogue and the pace for the dialogue within it and it read much much more fluently as the first time I actually read this I actually ended up hating it. But that was because this was one of the very first Batman stories that I ever got exposed to when just getting into comics. That was a mistake of mine, I believe. Because to truly appreciate the Frank Miller work, I think you actually should get some other Batman stories before that to truly appreciate it for what it is. So I think I'm gonna show you these in some type of chronological order, or at least in the order that they were published or exposed to the public. And the next one is also a classic team, and that is the Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale run of Batman. So this one contains all of their work, I think. So we have The Long Halloween, Dark Victory, Catwoman, Wed in Rome, and then that Halloween special. And what draws me into the Batman by Tim Sale and Jeff Loeb isn't necessarily Tim Sale's artwork. It is very classy, very dark colors, and bold blacks within the pages and it gives is it gives a, a kind of depth into it and much like Eduardo Rizzo's artwork or uh, Mike Mignola but what I'm really drawn into is of course the stories themselves because they have very developed characters within it not just for Bruce and Batman of course we also have the origins of Harvey Dent and Jim Gordon, which is not a commissioner at this point. And you also get to see Robin's origin within it and how he gets into the picture. Then there's of course all the villains that they use for it. The, the Long Halloween is basically the villain of the month, as much like Jeff Loeb's later on Hush story arc, we get a villain for each and every issue. But I have fond memories of it and much like The Dark Knight Returns, I think you should read other Batman stuff into truly appreciating the Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale run on the character. So this next era on the Batman runs is 
I don't know if this is after or before the Tim sale actually. I never do my research for this. Maybe I should. But the next one is Batman Nightfall. So I'm holding up one of the volumes, but I actually enjoy all of it. Of course I can bitch about how the covers for the Batman Nightfall omnibus is lined up and everything, but I'm not gonna do that. I just did that. But with that aside, I actually like these. I've owned these stories previously in the thick, thick phone book paper kind of quality on the trade paperback format before they released the omnibus. Much like all the other books that I've shown you so far, I did not appreciate this as much the first time as I reread it the second time. So the first time I read it within those thick phone book paperbacks that were released and then later on within the omnibus. I do believe that the omnibus actually had more tie-in issues as all of the titles in Batman had some sort of tie-in into this. It was always the middle part, volume 2, that got a little bit slow and that was basically because of Azrael. But I think most people would say the lacking of the Batman Nightfall story is that we actually do not get a good introduction into the Azrael character as his miniseries is not collected within a single one of those volumes. But what I enjoy about it is, of course, the journey itself of the characters of, of course, Bane breaking Batman's back, and then we get Azrael, and we get to see how this character is actually getting more and more corrupted by the Order of the Saint Dumas, and pretty much becoming Azrael again, and then we get Bruce back, and I, I just spoiled the whole of Nightfall there, but still. I like it, that's why it's in the top 10. Getting into more modernized Batman runs, I think this could count into that. This is a book I do not see often at all in people's comic book collections, and that is Batman War Games. And Batman War Games is written by Gabriel Anderson, I do believe that is how you say that name. This is more of a spoiler introduction. That was not a warning, I am talking about the spoiler character, which is Stephanie Brown. And within these pages we get her introduction into the Batman universe, and it gets kind of dark into the second half of this. This is a two volume story arc, and it revolves around her getting into the plans of the Batman and trying to basically take out all of the gangs within Gotham because she has found this massive plan that involves Mattress Malone. But then of course not knowing that Bruce is also Mattress Malone, Batman, it all turns sideways. One of the greatest moments, that's why I love this book, because turning Batman's plans upside down just because you do not involve Batman within the plan makes for actually an interesting take on it. If you haven't checked out War Games, I can happily recommend you do. Let's take another classic book. And I do not think that it gets more classic than this. The Killing Joke by Alan Moore. Not only Alan Moore, but let's not forget the excellent artwork by Brian Boland within this one-shot Batman book. The Killing Joke is something that I do not reread often as I do want to keep that first wow moment for as long as possible. But I have seen the animated movie of it once or twice now, but I must tell you I do skip the first 30 minutes actually watching that. But when it comes to the book itself and the meaning behind it as it is a one shot from Alan Moore's side, and maybe it's his one and only chance to actually write something about the character, he does it in an excellent way, as he hides hidden messages all over the book, it seems. The parts that I'm talking about mostly is to the very last act, when we actually get to hear the joke itself. And I went on and searched it on website and everything on how you actually should analyze the ending, and 
I've seen some podcasts on it with Grant Morrison and Kevin Smith discussing the series and how Alan Moore basically wrote the last Batman story without anybody knowing about it. So that's an interesting take on it and you can take it however you like but it is all on your perception of how you see this story. Of course, what most people see this story as is the origin of the Joker, but is it? It's completely up to interpretation, as I said, but this is also why this is up on my top 10 list. Next one is another book that I've shown you in a previous top 10 list, and that is Batman Hush by Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee. So we have already shown you one book that is with Jeff Loeb, but I do see this as a second run of a character as Jim Lee's artwork revolutionized the take of the character, I believe. I mean, he makes the classic Batman with underwear outside of his pants look really, really good. But last time, actually, I think I held up the Absolute Edition, whether this is the 15 year anniversary edition in the deluxe size format. And it is also one of the very few stories that I double dip on. But I think that should say something about how much I actually enjoy this. And I see the deluxe edition more as my travel book when the absolute actually I see as my reading at home book, I think. And of course, if you are new to the channel or haven't heard about Batman Hush, this is a great introduction, I would think, if you want to be a Batman reader. As you get introduced to maybe half of Batman's rogues gallery within these pages, these are 12 issues jam-packed with action, story, and I would say thrilling cliffhangers. The cliffhangers themselves is really what sold this book when it was coming out in singles. Of course, there was also Jim Lee's artwork, but then there is also the mystery on who Hush is. And then if you were gonna say there is no mystery on who Hush really is, don't spoil it for anyone, just let them enjoy this book for what it is. But also another reason why I have this in my top 10 is the inspiration that I get from Jim Lee's artwork as he, I followed his own YouTube channel and trying to make my own artwork in his style. And let me tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy. But serving as an inspirational source is always valuable and yeah that's why it's in the top 10. For this next book I was actually a little hesitant if I was gonna have this in my top 10 because I have not finished reading his run yet but for the things that I have read I think some of it is amazing and beautiful and that is why Batman by Tom King is on my top 10 Batman list. What people mostly think about when it comes to the start of Tom King's Batman run is the first five issues that he collaborated with David Finch on and they were not they were not well received but I kind of enjoyed it I mean I take it for what it is at the moment but what came after it together with Michael Jannon and Tom King best team when it comes to collaboration, I think, works so well. And I think, of course, when lightning struck first, for me at least, it was the I Am Suicide story arc. Of course, one can argue this is not Bruce Wayne, this is not how he would think about it or do it or any other of that. But I really enjoyed the story arc and then the I Am Bane story arc, of course. I mean, there is so much to take out of this and even when it comes to the everyday story arts and after after issue number 50 when Bruce Wayne breaks down and take out his rage on Mr. Freeze and everything I'm not gonna tell you why but I think those are some excellent excellent issues and yeah I think Tom King he I mean his writing he makes all of the characters human in one way or another. And of course, Bruce Wayne was already human, but we get to experience his humanity in another way within these pages. Much like we got to enjoy the vision 
and Mr. Miracle and see their humanity in those storylines. It's the same thing with this Batman, and that's why I love it, and that's why it's on the top 10. Next one is from the birth in the New 52 era, and I don't think there's a question about it. It's Scott Snyder's Batman, and not to mention also Greg Capullo's fine, fine artwork within these pages in this omnibus. I think this is some of the greatest Batman stories out there, actually, at least when it comes to the Court of Owls and the death of a family. Of course, in my top 10 video, I showed you one of my favorite graphic novels of his, which is The Black Mirror. You can count this into this also. But what he makes in the New 52 era is actually with Bruce Wayne. So I was thinking that I'm showing you this this time. I like most of the things that Scott Snyder has made to this character, but especially with this one. As I said, this contains the Court of Owls and Death in the Family and some other story arcs as well within the pages, but those two stands out for me the most. And most of them I've read and reread in other formats. Before I went on and curated all my books, I had the Court of Owls in, I think, three or four formats when it came to the noir version, the unwrapped version and maybe the standard hardcover and the absolute at the same time. So this would make the fifth format that I have had this series in. And that's only for the Court of Owls. But what I like about those stories is not only does he revamp Batman for a New 52 era, he revamps the whole of Gotham and let us see Gotham in a new scope. Just because he was so insecure about how to write a character that he has never known about. So he takes those insecurities in himself, places them into Batman, and then make him feel the same turmoil of not knowing his own city. Which I think is phenomenal. And then when it comes to a death of the family story arc, they delve into the love-hate relationship of the Batman and Joker. And there is one particular issue when they speak about how the eye reacts to certain questions and emotions. And I think that is some of the best poetry I've ever read in a Batman book when it comes to how to define love between two characters. So yeah, that's why it is in my top 10. And now, final two. Now this second to last book is also one that is not really finished as of yet, but it will be finished for the summer. That is Earth One Batman by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. This is yet another book that is perfect if you want to get into Batman, as it takes place in a separate universe. It is Almost like a year one story arc, much like Frank Miller's, but he's even clumsier at some points even. I mean, he is really, really green when it comes to both his gear, his costume, and his mannerism with the crime scenes. And I think it was pretty original of Jeff Jones to actually take a character that way, because We've always seen him as this very, very calculated guy with both when it comes to crime scenes and his gear and taking on two villains. Even the villains in these books aren't necessarily the biggest threats or something, but you get a really good take on the relationship developments between Bruce and Alfred and also Batman and Commissioner Gordon. or. I don't even think he's a commissioner yet in this one, actually. But you get the picture between Batman and Jim. So both a great new take on Batman as well as a great jumping on point if you want to get into Batman books. And that's why it's on the top 10. And now, last but not least, and probably already figured this out thanks to the thumbnail, but here it is. Grant Morrison's Batman. And yeah, I saved this for last because I think this is the greatest Batman run that I've read so far. 
The Grant Morrison Batman is also one of the very first Batman runs that I got a hold of and I have reread the most. I think the first paperbacks that I picked up was Batman and Son and the Batman and Robin trades. Later on I picked them up in the Absolute format and the standard hard deluxe covers. I've been exposed to Grant Morrison's Batman run so many times in so many formats that it's in there. Forever, I think. What I love about Grant Morrison's Batman run is that he made the linear verse way before DC ever got the thought of ever making all of Batman's history canon. So they didn't officially make Batman a linear character with all of his previously published work being canon, but Grant Morrison did it because he involved storylines that people would never have known of if it weren't for his Black Glove series, the one that's on the cover for this omnibus, and then later on within the Batman Incorporated run involving the Batwoman. So his story starts off with Bruce Wayne, of course, being basically 007 and cannot be beaten by any villain, no matter how much control they think they have, he has always been 10 steps ahead. That is basically Batman, but I think actually Morrison did it the best. And then of course later on within his story arc, he, we get a switch between our main characters. So we have Dick being Batman and then Damian Wayne being the Robin character. And this absolute, I think, is one of my oldest possessions when it comes to the Grant Morrison. And I just love it. And this is a double dip for sure when it comes to the Volume 2 omnibus of Grant Morrison. But the artwork by Frank Quitely, I cannot see myself ever getting rid of this actually. Other people complain about how Frank Quitely draws his women. But in my defense, there aren't a lot of women being drawn within that run. Actually, when we get a woman introduced into the series, it's Batwoman, but then the artists have changed. But there's something about the paneling and the layout in the Batman Robin series that I adore, and that's why I cannot get rid of it. But Grant Morrison's run is one that has been with me the longest, and therefore it is one of my dearest possessions when it comes to Batman runs, and that's why it's on the top 10. So if you have stayed with me this long, I would like to thank you so much for watching my top 10 Batman runs. The next video surely is gonna be either the top 10 Marvel Omnibus or the top 10 Spider-Man runs, as I've already made that voting. But don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below, and I'll be sure to see you in the next video. Bye bye.